I'll, I'll tell you just like a very quick story about how I, how I even started to think about home ownership, mortgages, things like that. So my father would draw this very, very simple X, Y axis on like the back of a napkin when I was younger around the dinner table, when we'd have these like conversations, we'd always get together at like six o'clock every single day and just have dinner together. And he'd put the cost of rent just slowly going up. I guess it's the Y axis. I haven't done math in a while. <laughs> uh, and then the cost of your principal payment on your home going down. Mm. And obviously you're like your rent, your rent price will just slowly increase. Whereas your principal will slowly come down and that's how you create your equity. Oh, wow. And it was just that little sort of trigger in my mind that they were just thought, okay, yeah, well, home ownership is just really the way to go. Like, this is how you create your own sort of little nest egg. And that was only the beginning, obviously, because I hadn't turned my mind to when I was in my teens to what the idea of owning multiple properties would involve or provide to me. Um, but just something like really as simple as that, like those little life lessons, I think go a really long way. Yeah. So did they end up buying their own personal residence uh, after moving to Canada or? Yeah. So they lived with a, with my grandparents for some time who were, they had come here just before. And then they bought their first home in Scarborough. It was like a, like a smaller home. Um, I think it might've been detached even. And then they just slowly started to roll that over. So they'd get a larger home in okay. seven, eight years, a larger home in seven, eight years. And then do you know when their first purchase would have been? Was it around the eighties or? It must've been, it must've yeah. been. Yeah. So they, they lived through that period between 1989 and 1995, where actually real estate prices came down, interest rates were right. as high as 20%, right? So they've, so they lived through that, yet are still advocates for real estate ownership, right? To own your own home and instead of renting. So that's, that's really cool. Oh, absolutely. And they would have been through the sort of the 08 crisis as well and, yeah. and maintain their maintain their home throughout and are still advocates of, of home, home ownership for sure. Um, and even through the purchase of this home, they've really been uh, pushing me to really, move yeah. forward with it. And awesome. yeah, oh, for, absolutely. Yeah. My father's been telling me to buy a condo in Toronto for <laughs> 10, year, 10 years. So, and if I did, and if I listened to him 10 years ago, I'd probably be laughing. At him. <laughs> so why, why don't we segue into, uh, into this deal? So let me, I just had one from before I just edited it. All right. Uh, <laughs> St. Catherine's duplex. So, uh, this property was listed at, uh, 519. Uh, we saw it on one of our showings. We saw a few homes that day and this one really sort of stood out. They were holding offers pretty much at that time. Most homes had kind of got to that point of holding offers. Now, basically every, every home is holding offers. Why don't you share a little bit? What was it about this home that, you know, when you saw it really appealed to you, I guess. In terms of my first purchase, and this is something I had spoken with other people, but you and I had also spoken about, I wanted something a little bit more turnkey, a little bit more easy for me to jump into. I wanted to get my feet wet, but I didn't want to jump into something that was going to inc include or involve a lot of uh, maintenance moving forward or a lot of renovation from the outset or that was going to uh, involve me expending a lot of capital that I had saved up so this was just just that starter home just to get in the door we had talked about single family single family home as being my probably my ideal first purchase I thought uh, I had run some numbers on cash flows in the area uh, comparing single family homes as opposed to duplexes and triplexes. And obviously those numbers, when you do create that scale, were just much more appealing to me. Yeah. So what, what, when it came, when I ran my numbers in advance of, uh, seeing the home, when you had sent me the listing, I thought, okay, well, this is, you know, this is, this is turnkey. It's a 97 build. Um, it's got really good bones. It's in a pretty decent area. Um, it's close to Montebello park in St. Catharines, which is, uh, this pretty little park um near the downtown it's about 10 minutes downtown excuse me 10 minutes from downtown uh it's really close to um local major highways i mean it's a multitude of factors obviously yeah but... yeah specifically it's on the nice side of the downtown because if if you talk about st right. Catharines downtown you go on the east side it becomes this rough neighborhood but on the west side montebello park and the area around it Actually, south of Montevallo Park, there's like million dollar homes, right? So it's like this beautiful right. area. And even north where this property is, it's it's a nicer, nice area. So definitely a good spot. But this this home was very interesting, actually, because the one thing we found out afterwards or 
I guess, during the, the process of putting in the offer and, and really doing our due diligence was that it's an R3 zoned neighborhood. So it's actually a higher density zoning, which what we figured out was even though the property currently is not a legal duplex, you will be able to legalize it in the future if you had to without having to follow some of the restrictive rules that St. Catharines has for in-law suites, right? So because you have that higher density zoning, you can go to a full legal duplex, same renovation, same building code, but now you can maximize the entire square footage of the basement. Otherwise, there would be like a 650 square foot minimum and a 40% square footage minimum, whichever is less. It was just sort of like the icing on the cake when we started yeah. during the due diligence period when, my, when I had the, when we pulled zoning. <laughs> and it, I think it's just reflective. There's a, there's actually a really small low rise sort of two or three story sort of a comp, uh, apartment complex mm. next door. And I suspect that at one point that was obviously just part of the lands and then they probably yeah. subdivided thereafter. So yeah. probably something that's just lingered. But. Yeah, true, true. So this one, we had to pay over asking. There were, I forget how many multiple offers, maybe three other offers, was it? Uh, yeah, three or four. And then we got yeah. down to just myself and another bidder on the other side. That's right. And then, yeah. well, I had put in a quote unquote bully offer, but it That's probably right. wasn't strong enough on the evening before uh, mm. formal offer day. Yeah. Um, it, And then this is something you and I discussed, I think in today's market, going in under asking at least it depends it depends on what you know geographical region we're talking about here but st catharines and niagara seem to be pretty strong at the moment like it's certainly a seller's market 100 um, and you can you can you can speak to that much more i think than i can because with your agent hat on but i, I again it was probably my first uh, my first negotiation so i was trying to be a bit more aggressive whether it it bit me in the behind i don't know like i guess i'll never know but <laughs> 20, 20k over asking when we run the numbers still made sense to me. So I mean, ultimately that I was comfortable with that price. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even this may sound crazy, but this same property now, if it were listed on the MLS and it's only literally been what, two months since we put that offer, was it November or it was actually December, right? I think it was December when he got it under contract. Yeah. yeah. Closed February 2nd. Yeah. Yeah, so just two two months ago when we put the offer, likely the same property if it were on the MLS right now would be selling in maybe low sixes actually. So oh, wow. okay. in, in such a short time, just the market just between December and January it just had this spike, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if, if the price were on there. So you paid over at that time. Yes, we ran the numbers. We knew it was going to be positive cash flow. It was going to be a good long-term hold. So we weren't necessarily too worried about what was going to happen in the short term if value was going up or down. It was a long-term investment, right? And uh, and we had that to sort of fall back on. So so either way, 20% uh, down payment, 108,000 plus, you know, your closing costs, your land transfer tax, your uh, title insurance, all of that. But uh, something in the range of about 110, maybe even 115,000 would have been your uh, your initial investment, right? But <laughs> you're, you're one of the few clients that actually saved the entire down payment. Most of my clients are are pulling this out of their um, their HELOCs, right, or, or the equity from their personal residence. But you you actually save every single dollar that <laughs> that went oh, into down payment. I, I've worked pretty hard over the past, like, well, since I started working, I was nineteen, I guess, but uh, or eighteen or nineteen. But I, over the past four years, I've worked pretty hard and mm. been lucky enough to have a pretty strong salary at, at my work that I've been able to save. A considerable amount so yeah it was it's nice to put that much it's also really hurts when you look back at your bank account and you're like oh there's a hundred k gone but, but that's nature of the beast i guess yeah at least it's working for you now right it's it's in an asset yeah like your dad said right <laughs> pay down and rent's going up so yeah yeah like my father yeah. <laughs> now you have that working for you awesome awesome let's go on to the next slide here um so this property was already set up as a two bedroom upper unit and a two bedroom basement unit, already well renovated in good shape. The only thing that needed to be done is there wasn't a clear separation of the upstairs and the basement. It had sort of this staircase into a laundry area with a door that people could just pass through the units. Uh, so why don't you share a little bit about 
sort of this twenty two hundred dollar renovation that you ended up doing to the property? Yeah, it was it was fairly minor. Uh, the property is set up with a rear entrance for the lower level unit and then the front door for the upper unit. Uh, when you walk through the home from the upper unit, you take a small uh, staircase down. There's a small landing um, that leads to the lower level unit, and it's sort of a shared landing, which I've created for uh, the uh, laundry supplies that you're washer and, washer and dryer. Mm. There was only a single sort of like very your standard bedroom door separating the two units. Maybe it was for the purposes of like an in-law suite, for example, could, I guess it could have been used yep. as an in-law suite. Yeah. Um, but as I knew I was going to be operating it as a duplex with two separate units, we created two separate doors um, with lock and key mm. um, just to create that separation. So they each have their own independent keys. They have that sense of sort of privacy and security. Yeah. It's also good for noise yep. uh, cancellation, noise reduction, because one of the doors into the lower level unit is directly into a bedroom. Yeah. Um, so um, to, to address, to just to address that privacy yeah. uh, issue. And I think, I think it's, it turned out really nicely actually. Yeah. And, and in the scheme of things, this is a very, very small renovation budget for, yeah. <laughs> for the separation of units. Right. So um, it's nice. You didn't have to add an extra laundry set. You didn't have to run plumbing, right. You just closed off that, little vestibule, so to speak, with two entries right. and and you have now your uh, your laundry room. So awesome. So 2200 was the rental budget. In, in terms of the actual expenses, so every month you ended up getting a mortgage with 30-year uh, amortization. What was the interest rate you mentioned on this one again? 1.58, 1. <laughs> 1. really strong, which is ridiculous actually, I think. Awesome. So under 1.6% interest rate, which is crazy, crazy to think about, right? But right. Um, yeah, so your mortgage payment ends up only being around 15, 15, 11 a month. Property taxes about 250, insurance for a duplex, right? About 166. Uh, utilities, we put 300 there. It may be slightly more, maybe less, right? They're, both of the units are two bedroom units. So likely you're going to get tenants that are not going to be using too much utilities, hopefully. Um, so anyways, we put a $300 buffer in there. So your total monthly expenses are going to end up being around 22, 27 approximately. And let's take a look at your income. So why don't you share a little bit about uh, maybe the, the rent you were able to get and I guess the kind of tenant you, you ended up finding for the upper unit. Yeah, so I've rented up the upper unit, still currently in the process of of looking for tenants for the lower lower level unit, just trying to be a bit more selective with who I put in there. And then also considering the uh, dynamics between the upper unit and the lower level unit. Um, obviously there are separate entrances, but it is, it is one home, it is one property, uh, it's just the single lane driveway as well that I'm trying to sort of parking. So I wanna be really considerate of, you know, the, the, the personalities, I guess, between yeah. the upper and lower level unit. Um, in terms of, uh, rent prices 1750 was probably I, I again you you just have to run your comparisons in the area i think we had talked initially about when i'd been been running my numbers to purchase the home around 1650 or 1700 mm -hmm. and, I, and i just kept taking a look at rents in the area and i thought you know this has got really nice bright windows no the kitchen isn't necessarily in the upper level unit uh modernized or updated but it, it just it has a, it, the, the kitchen and the dining room have a really nice open area. Mm. Um, it's, I dedicated the two parking spaces to the upper level unit. Okay. And that probably, com that co probably commanded a little bit more rent as well. Yeah. Um, so that's how we landed on the upper and it's it just got uh, currently in the process of what, executing. It. What kind of tenant did you end up finding? Is it a uh, single couple, family? What what type of tenant profile? Yeah, it's a, it's a single it's actually a single mother um she has a pretty strong job at a college in sort of the gta region and she's okay. commuting yeah it seems like a really nice uh, family person so perfect perfect yeah how well, that works right uh so tentatively you have the basement listed at 1475 you doing some showings this sunday so you're getting interest so i'm sure it it's a beautiful basement right i don't expect it'll it'll take too long to get that uh rented out and yeah so your uh, your total rent is thirty two fifty. I may have screwed up on the expenses there. Uh, thirty, so it should be twenty two twenty five in terms of the expenses. 
Who vetted this PowerPoint? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You should Jeez, fire the fire editor here. Assistant, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So cash flow ends up being tentatively just unfortunately you, you missed the, the boat by $2.5. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you almost had a chance of getting to a thousand bucks there. But anyways, with, with this cash flow, we're obviously looking at just the fixed expenses, right? So invariably when you own a rental property, there are variable expenses, right? Maintenance and repair. There's going to be a vacancy here and there. There's going to be a plumbing leak. There's there's money to be spent. The way that we typically look at this cash flow is, you know, a part of this cash flow is to be invested back into the property to keep it going. But it's your insurance from you having to put your own savings into the property. The property should pay for itself, right? And over time, it should also generate a healthy amount of profit that, uh, especially with, with numbers like this, I'm sure even from day one, you're you're going to start having a, a nice margin there and you're going to build up that bank account really well. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about how the numbers came out. Um, when I when I do run my numbers for an issue looking at a property in the due diligence space, I will include, like we discussed, like I'll do an 8% factor and 8% for maintenance, mm. uh, including like CapEx, anything like that. And then I'll do 2%, generally 2% for vacancies. And even with those numbers, I was still close to like a healthy 600 yeah. hundred dollars or so yeah. a month, which is, I think, pretty strong for yeah. something that I've put. Yes, I've obviously put a large down payment down at 20%, but otherwise should provide me with little headaches for, you know, the foreseeable five to 10 years, especially with, there was a recent, uh, so the shingles were done recently, didn't seem to appear to be any sort of foundational issues or anything like that. And, mm. and, and, and furnace, I think was also replaced within the past four or five years as well. So yeah. Um, probably no large capex expenditures in the next little while. Yeah, it's a newer built home anyways, right? It's just 22, right. 23 years old. So there's uh, definitely a lot of benefits from, from getting a newer home. So 